The Potan Hup 3227 is the first of a new series of self-erecting cranes that was introduced at the Balmer exhibition in 2016. In the name, the 32 stands for the jib length, which is 32 metres, and the 27 stands for the underhook height of a horizontal jib of 27 metres. There are a number of parts to the model and it comes with this instruction sheet, and it is entirely pictorial and describes all of the main features of the model. Out of the box, the model does not come rigged with a hook, so we need to erect it and put the hook on. So here we have the model set up, it's on a base that you can level with the screw jacks. And the first step is to unfold the hinged mast. Next, just like the real crane, we need to add some stability. And there are three identical ballast blocks supplied. They interlock together and you place them one on top of another to the full height. And that represents the 12 separate blocks of the real crane. The top section of the mast has a telescopic section inside it, so to erect the crane we need to raise that telescopic section. And in doing so, the tyre bars at the back pull down on the back of the jib, and then it rotates into a horizontal position. There are two different height settings for the mast, and when you've chosen the one you want, you lock it with a plastic pin. Next we can unfold the jib, and it comes in three sections. On the real crane, this is all controlled by hydraulic cylinders. But here on cranes etc we make use of giant hands. One thing to note is that the real crane can be operated in any of the three jib configurations. But here we are still assembling the model so we need to add on the trolley. And as it's plastic it can be eased over and clipped onto the jib. The hoist rope runs up through the centre of the telescopic mast. And fortunately Conrad have already run it through for you. After a little bit of complex reeving the crane is ready with its hook. The last thing to do whilst the crane is up in the air is to add on one of the transport axles and that just clips onto the mast. For the detail we'll start with the transport axles, and the rear one is nicely detailed with the front one being much simpler. Whilst the base is fairly simple the electrical cabinet looks good, and there's a plastic hoist motor attached to the mast. The counterweight blocks are grey to represent concrete, and they have the Potan name nicely embossed. At the top of the mast the arrangement is quite complex with many of the parts in plastic, and that includes the tie bars and the name boards. The metal lattice jib is good and it's nice and straight when erected, although the tie bars are very soft and don't have much tension. The hook block is metal and both it and the trolley have tiny metal pulleys. The hoist winch is located at the bottom of the mast and you can operate it by using your finger, although you might get fed up when your finger wears down to the bone. There is quite a bit of friction in the system so you need a decent load to keep tension on the hook. And another feature of the model is that you can replicate the inclined jib angles of the real machine. It's implemented on the model by means of a telescopic tie bar at the back, and there are three holes for three separate angles. To incline the jib you pull down on the tie bar, and that rotates the jib about the mast pivot and inclines the jib. You can then lock the angle you want by inserting a tiny plastic pin into the tie bar hole. The only problem here is that if you've got fingers the size of salamis, then holding the pin and inserting it will be a bit of a challenge. With the jib inclined we can have a look at another aspect of the model and that is the movement of the trolley. On the real crane it's controlled by ropes, but on the model you have to use your hand to shift the trolley along. The 
model has its hook on, so now let's dismantle it for transport. And to start this, the correct position for the trolley is on the very short length of jib between sections 1 and 2. And the reason for parking it there is that it remains at the end of the folded jib. As soon as the jib is folded up, we can then reverse the rest of the erection sequence. And that starts by removing the locking pin from the mast. The telescopic section retracts, and as it does so, the jib takes up a vertical position. The counterweight blocks come off, and then the mast can be split and folded. So the crane is fully folded, and to be able to move it, we need to fix the front axle. And that slots into place near where the counterweight blocks were held. And after that, you secure it in position with plastic bolts. For transport, the outrigger beams then need to be folded into position, and the best way to do that is to point them towards the rear axle. All we need now is a truck to tow the crane, and in this case we'll clip the tow bar into the towing hitch of a Conrad truck model. As we've got some space on the truck, we might as well add some of the counterweight, and we've got space for two of the blocks. So that's the model, let's now go and do a dim check and get the measuring tape out. And in normal mode, the model is about 23 inches or 60 centimeters high, or with a steep jib, it's 31 inches or 80 centimeters high. Folding tower cranes like this are difficult machines to model in 150 scale, and the complex engineering always presents a challenge for the model maker. Conrad has done a very good job with the model engineering of this Potan hub, and its main plus point is that it replicates the flexibility of the real crane. So overall it's highly recommended. Mm -hmm. 